Hello and welcome to the very first episode of the Backlog Podcast. My name is Nick, and today we're talking about Final Fantasy X, a game so good that I've only beat it once. Mike, if you could fucking stop clicking whatever you're clicking, that would be great. I'm not clicking you're anything. Fucking, you're just fucking moving around at your desk. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> with me, I have uh, Mike. He's going to be the uh, the man on the panel. You've already heard his voice. Say hello, Mike. To the future people. Hi. Uh, as you can tell from the sultry, smooth sound of Mike's voice, he's sort of a uh, bara husbando type. And uh, he would uh, tear that boy pussy up given the opportunity, if you know what I'm saying. So uh, Absolutely not. <laughs> so... I've been wanting to fucking do that bit for fucking weeks. Weeks! I was gonna fucking, if Maddie was here, no, I was Now gonna, you got it. Now I got it! It's fucking recorded forever. Alright, so we're gonna talk about some, some sweet, sweet Final Fantasy X. Uh, it is one of my favorite JRPGs of all time. I'm a huge fan. Despite only beating it once, I just think that the journey through it is so much fun. And typically I get just stuck playing Blitzball because... Uh, it's literally like one of my favorite games of all time. Just blitz ball by itself. So let's fucking okay. So what to you is the story of Final Fantasy X as you understand it? Like you know, uh, Titus being a dream and all that shit. Uh, I want to know what your take is on it, and I want to give you my take, and we can kind of see what what we both think. Cause okay. I have like an idea, and but it's just there's it's a lot. I don't know. Yes, yeah, so like if you want my take, I could probably ramble on for like five, six minutes about it, but Let's I'm not go. gonna do that. I'm Let's gonna go. try to keep it no, no, no. two minutes. What, no no, what's your what is it? No, I'll, I'll just give you my sentence. <laughs> so, like, uh, <laughs> okay, alright, we'll go we'll go the short route. Short route. We're I'm trying to so, fill trying to fill time, but fuck it. We'll just we'll do the short yeah, one. So essentially like the whole uh, world of Spira is stuck in this endless cycle as they call it, where like this huge ass monster called Sin just constantly wrecks havoc, and the only way to defeat Sin is to uh, have these people who train in summoning basically go on a pilgrimage throughout the entire world, get all the summons, and make their way to Xanarkin, where they get the final summon, which is powerful enough to defeat Sin, and then they use that final summon to defeat Sin. But that uh, defeating Sin only makes him go away for a uh, undisclosed years, amount of time. Right? Yeah. I, no, it's like five to ten years, I think. Is it really? Yeah, because they said, um, I don't know who said it, but it was like when Lord Braska, Yuna's father, defeated Sin, they had like the longest common history, which I think was only ten to nineteen years. Jesus. Okay. So yeah, sometimes they defeat him, and it's like two years, and he comes back. So. Oh fuck that! Yeah. So what is but, like, what is Titus? Um, from my understanding, he's just a. Uh, uh, He's a dream from Xanarkand, and Xanarkand's basically this made-up... It's, it's not a made-up world. It's what... Um, it's basically a, a, a city from the past that uh, was destroyed by uh, Bavel in a huge in a huge war. Because mm -hmm. Bavel basically uh, used all this machina to destroy Xanarkand, and then Xanarkand used to be this uh, city of, of a bunch of summoners, so then they basically got together and had a big summon to uh, preserve Xanarkand in a dreamlike state. And so they've been dreaming the entire time of this city that's just been going on, and Titus is part of it. See, and they they eventually they got tired out to the world to try to fix things, and that didn't help. So then they brought Titus out to Spira to try to fix it again. Right. So my understanding is, yeah, all of Xanarkand is a dream like people are like basically summoning it in a constant state um yep. and then they summon titus and then he like they didn't ex like sin the the like the dynamic of sin didn't expect that to happen and that's why they have like the final calm with titus but like yep. so mike i was thinking about this on the car ride here from work today uh does that mean that jacked was also a dream before he that's, became that's what sin, I or I think so. Was he actually like a time traveler? Because like that was I was thinking about it. You know, that means that he was dreamt, and then he became sin, and then they just dreamt up his son too, and then his fucking son kills him. Spoilers. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> fucking spoilers. This, well, it's it's like a fifteen year old game. I'm not gonna <laughs> try to not spoil this game at this point. No, no, that's right? always something that I 
one or two, and there's a lot of stuff in this game where I just don't know the answer to, so I yeah. assume since Jet was part of Xanarkin, he was also a dream. Yeah, but I'm wondering if, like, I don't know, like, was he part of the real Xanarkin? Because they were all part of the real Xanarkin, is that's the point, right? Is they were, mm -hmm. those people yeah. existed in time at one point. Like, they're not pretend. Like, when we're saying dreaming of them, it's this sort of uh, mechanic within the Final Fantasy X world where, yep. like, these beings called, uh, what the fuck are they called? Uh, fiends? No, the, uh, the, not the fiends, the... Faith? The, the faith, yeah. The faith, like, have the ability to, like, summon shit or whatever via, like, a co-op work of them, uh, doing this. And they just created Titus out of, like, the memory of Xanarkin from however fucking long ago. Like, a hundred years, probably. Mm -hmm. Um... I mean, long enough, long enough for like Blitzball, like the uh, the good game, like Bow, to become not about Blitzball, but about like summoning, like th like that's got to be at least like a few hundred years. Oh, the uh, the like, little like little ball that thing they, they do. do. Oh, the prayer. Yeah. yeah, the little ball, like hold the ball and the Bow thing, <laughs> like that. Like if you think like it has to be at least a few hundred years for something like that. To go from being I, about a sport to about, like, being about your religion, I'm, you know? I'm not totally certain about the time span, but I think it's over a thousand years that Holy went, shit. went from Xanarkin being destroyed to present-day time. To Spira, to where we're at in, yeah. in the plot of Final Fantasy X. Okay. What, what I never got was, uh, so they described that, uh, what is it, uh, what's the religion called? Uh, I don't know. The Church of Yevon or whatever, they described that. Sin was born because of uh, necessity of Machina, Machina from yeah. from Bevel. Mm -hmm. So what I never got was did uh, the people of Xanarkin summon Sin? They to might, yeah, to, maybe to fight back so against them, and then they, it became this yeah, sort so of never-ending monster. They both summon Sin and preserve Xanarkin at the same time. So, uh, is what so I think was um, yeah, so there's this dude on YouTube named uh, Dansk08. He's like the fucking the king of Final Fantasy X. Fucking if this podcast is anywhere. Fucking check that guy out. He's fucking pimped. If you ever, if you ever want actually good information about Final Fantasy, if you happen to find us, and not that. Guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, no, I mean they probably, you know, I'm just saying. Like, if you ever fucking want to learn more about Final Fantasy X, like this dude has played the game like a hundred times, and he knows everything about it. And when I was watching him, when I was like super deep into Final Fantasy X, and this actually like falls into like uh, Xanderkin summoning Sin. Xanarkin is actually like a dream world inside of Sin. Like Sin is protecting oh, is the dream world of Sin or oh. of Xanarkin. So like okay. the faith is inside Sin, like keeping the dream Xanarkin is currently living inside of Sin. And like they just okay. plopped tight they plopped Jekt out of it and they plopped Titus out of it. And then Jekt becomes Sin and then Titus defeats Jekt. And then I, and they, like, and he, he defeats it like legit. Like they don't like fucking do the bullshit of the final summon. They fucking jump inside that bitch, and they mm -hmm. they cut him up. They cut that little bug up, a little tiny <laughs> little sin bug. See, that's weird because in the uh, opening like first twenty minutes sequence, like it shows Anarchan getting destroyed by sin. So was that like a mini sin and no, side maybe, sin? No, destroying? maybe that was maybe that was well, yeah. Well, maybe that was the summoning of sin, like the original summoning oh. of sin. You know, okay, that, that makes sense. If or that's true, you yeah. know, like if they're getting bombed or whatever, and then they do the original summoning of sin, and then some shit happens, and instead of like it continuing the story of like what happened to Xanarkin, they you, that that moment happens, and it gets pulled into the future Spira, and then okay. you know, that wasn't supposed to happen, and then they, it does the turn of events, and Titus is just so cool. He's like, Nah, it's my story, and he just like it's my story, <laughs> it's my story, and then he just saves the day because like nobody because. You know, in Spira currently, they believe that they have to do the final summoning, they have to sacrifice one of their best yep. friends, they have to fucking use the monster, and, and they've just been led to believe that, and it's mm -hmm. just simply not true. And Titus is the first person to ever go, well, that's dumb, I don't want to die, though. And then, like, they're just like, huh? And then um, just can like, I do that? <laughs> you can just do that? Question mark? Yeah. And so I just loved, I love that. Like, I, I, I think that still to this, it's just like the story, like, yeah, and to, no, please. Go uh, ahead. To, to more of that, it's like, I think with the system where like, 
when you defeat Sin, you only have like 5, 10, 15 years of uh, basically no Sin glory days and just lounging around. It's like when uh, when he's just wrecking all that much havoc and uh, what am I going to say? <laughs> like when, he, when, he's, when he's wrecking all that havoc, like you just basically have to defeat him because it's like he... So why about the whole world, basically? Like he'll, yeah. like Sin will you, destroy you the just, entire world. Yeah, you can't just let him keep going. You have to end him. So when they get to the end, it's like they know they're gonna die, but they kind of have to do it because they know the entire world is yeah. depending on them I'll to make, do this. I'll make the sacrifice of one life to save the entire world, or or two lives since the right. other person. Because the, the summoner has to die as well. So the summoner and their closest yeah. friend has to die, which is brutal. Like I love that flashback. Where it shows, uh, was it Arn's sacrifice or was it Jet? It was Jet's sacrifice for Broska. Yeah, Jetson. Mm -hmm. And he just he's like, yeah, dude, I'll go. And then he just like dies. Like it's crazy because you start to like like kind of like Jet despite him being an asshole. And you find out like he's like an okay dude and he didn't actually like abandon his kid. Like he was he was kind of a dick to his kid, but he's like just one of those sports dads, you know. But he was yeah, just like yeah, he just left and like Titus like, never knew. If we're going to transition into talking about Jet, it's like they describe Jet or Titus describes Jet since like he lived with him. Like he was this, he was a terrible dad. He, was he wasn't drunk. drunk. He, he was, wasn't alcoholic. He was, yeah. He treated his wife bad, bad, uh, bad. He was like basically bullying Titus. And yeah, it, it's weird when you get to like the actual game and everyone like Lulu and Yuna is like, oh my God, Jet is like the funniest guy. He was so nice to me. He was just the best. And it's yeah. like, it's Here's, such a stark contrast between what Titus knows and what everyone else knows. And it's yeah, he's like, like, are you talking about my dad? And he's just yeah, like, my old known. man. Old man. Because he's never known that. And then, like, you slowly get to find out, like, oh, Jack is kind of just like, I don't know, maybe it's because he found his purpose. I don't know. But it's like, it is yeah. weird that he does have, because it was truth. Like, Titus wasn't lying about Jack being an asshole. He, he was a piece of shit. Yeah, but then, like, once he was like, oh, I'm in a whole new world. Like, he embraced it and became a new person. And then, and then at, during the fight with Jack in, in Sin, like, when you actually fight, like, Nega Jack, you know, like the big jet with like that, 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 sick, that sick rock track where it's like, da, 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 da. and he pulls a sword out of his chest. <laughs> <play with it. laughs> yeah. Doesn't he go, You have to kill me, son? Like, I love you or whatever? Like, doesn't he give you yeah, him that? Yeah, because um, during that cutscene in Unaleska, he was basically like, Look, I'll I'll sacrifice myself because I really have no purpose in this world, and at this point, I'm not going to be able to go back to make Titus this blood star that I wanted to. I'm not going to be able to go back to treat my wife the way that she deserves to be treated. Like, he realized he was a piece of shit, and he was like, at least I can do the world, this world I'm in right now good, so I'm, I'm going to sacrifice myself, and hopefully, since I sacrificed myself and I tell Orin to go back to Xanarkin to get Titus, that he'll figure something out. Right. That he'll, he'll figure so, out that maybe I'm not such a bad guy, and that I just was yeah, a flawed, so once, flawed dude. And once Titus gets to see him again inside Sin, he's basically like, you know you have to kill me because this will end the cycle. Yeah. So why exactly is it that uh, Titus was able to do the final rest, like the final one without? Is it because they, they killed Unaleska instead? Is, it, is that why? The final what? Like uh, where they, they killed Sin for real. Was it because they didn't do the final summoning and killed Unaleska instead? No, Unaleska had nothing to do with it. She was just under the impression of, um, basically, like, she was just a cycle fanatic. Like, oh, the only way to oh. give this world peace is through the final summoning. So mm -hmm. they basically figured out, like, oh, well, well if you're Sin dead. Is you're dead and everybody else is dead. So let's fucking, let's just yeah. send your ass and then we'll just let the living people figure F it out. Figure something out. Yeah. So they basically go, okay, well, Sin is Jet. We just need to connect with Jet somehow through Sin. So that's when they play the song and they fly. Oh, the yeah! Head. The fucking song! And they, yeah! And then they, they have that cool scene where you just fight Sin head on. You just basically bum rush him straight to the face. Yeah, with the, dude, uh, air that, oh, yeah. Well, dude, that fight is hard as fuck, too. Yeah, like, it, 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 I got, got my ass beat. Fight. Oh, my God, dude. I spent yeah. so much fucking time on that fight because it's just like. If you don't hit that damage 
threshold, you're dead. Your whole party's dead, yeah. and you gotta fucking start from the beginning. Like, no, it it's not a traditional takes... fight like, who, no. where he does damage. It's game over. It is you're literally done. fucking, you need to finish each phase one by one perfectly, or you gotta redo it. And it was a pain in the dick. It took me a while. It took me a fucking no. while to get through that fight. That was probably one of the, I would say, top three hardest fights in the game. It's probably number two, I would say. Number two? I think it's like number four for me, but... Really? I guess I can talk about that later. Yeah, I thought, uh... I thought Braskis... You cut out. Pretty easy. Hold on. Repeat all of that because you turned into a robot and went silent. You're still silent. What is my Discord? Before I think less good. Breath. You are. We're gonna pop. Fuck. We're gonna pause the recording. What if I can pause? Am I cutting out now? Yeah, you've been cutting out. Yeah, your voice dropped to like really bad for a second. Oh. Alright, well, we're, well, we're back now. Alright. Am I back? Yeah, we're back. We'll just we'll leave all that shit in. Fuck it. Continue. Right, well, now, top three fights. You said it was I'm, number four. So let's go. If, if I'm officially, I think it's not. I think uh, Brass Final Aeon, Unileska, and Seymour Flux are harder, not in any particular order that I rank them. I, I had, think with Sin, as long as you have the damage output, it's easy. I have There's a no really way he can actually kill you. Hard time with um, Jet. I had a really hard time with that. I remember you bitching about it to me. <laughs> yeah, we were in the call that night, bro. I needed mean, that now. This is yeah. fucking bullshit. This is fucking... He just, went, like, one hit kills my whole fucking team. Bullshit. <laughs> yeah, dude. And that fucking rock track... That fucking, cross that, fucking that fucking rock track was getting real old after, like, an hour and a half. <laughs> I was just like, all right, bro. This is some bullshit, dude. This is some bullshit. I want some wandering flame. This is some fucking trash. I was, I was getting real tired yeah. of that. And you know, with any good hard boss fight in this game, it's uh, prompted with a 10-minute cutscene. Yeah. <laughs> Unskippable, too. Unskippable, yep. because I played it on PS2, so that shit was unfucking skippable Every time. Like, no, they added... Every single version, the PC, PS4, and PS3, they're all unskippable. Have you played the HD collection? I, yeah, I played it on PS3. Oh, yeah, because like you, you, uh, like you uh, fucking... Uh, you 100 percent it, didn't you? Yeah, Platinum mm -hmm. Trophy. Yeah. Nerd. Mm-hmm. Um, mine would probably be... It was be... not worth it, by the way. Ouch. Ouch at fucking Final Fantasy X. <laughs> um, I would say... I really did have a hard time with that, but Unileska. Unileska was probably my least favorite fun fight. That was like the hardest one of all time. Number one is probably Unileska. Uh -huh. Because of that fucking zombie shit. So she'd, uh, what? zombie hat, like your whole team, so you had to switch out. And then like, like, no, you had to switch out like one member who was alive or with not cursed and then heal everybody and then do that over and over, over and over because she would, uh, oh, I... Go she would do that. And then she'd full heal you. And so the zombies would yep. die. The person who was fine would get fully healed. And then you'd have to spend that time, like, two more turns, rezzing the other two people. And then you just kind of chip her away. Like, dealing with that fucking cycle. Over and over and yeah. over again. Like, uh... I, th I say it's one of the hardest fights in the game, but it's also one of my favorite because it's. I think it just has these really unique mechanics, like with like what she said. But like Unileka herself, she doesn't do a lot of damage. She just does like the whole the party stacks. like zombie attack. Yeah. yeah, and then she like casts confuse on your party. But oh, so it's oh, like, goddamn! Yeah, when Waka and yeah. Aran get confused and they just smash fucking Yuna, yeah. just kill her ass one in over. one hit. It's just like, dude, yeah. come the fuck on, bro. And then it'll just, like, Waka will just throw the ball at his own fucking face and just fucking kill himself. Yeah, and just, like, you know, critical himself to <laughs> do, like, 10k damage. God damn it, dude. That happened, I was just like, fuck <laughs> this. And I would just fucking, I'd turn the game off. Like, I'd, like, I'm coming back tomorrow and doing this shit. Like, when fucking Waka would just smash fucking Yuna in the face, and then, like, next turn, Aaron would fucking kill Waka. I'm just like, all right, bro, like, 
This one's yeah, not. This is confused. not the, the, the then, RNG. Then he kills himself. And then you get a game <laughs> over. And then you have to watch another ten minute cutscene to go back. Hilarious. No. Yeah, but like in that fight, like she doesn't do a lot of damage. Like every single like AOE party attack does like two hundred damage. So you're not at any risk of dying, except like at the risk of your own party or when she uses full life on somebody. Yeah. But not, but not only that. Like in her third phase, she also casts like Mega Death on your whole yeah. party. So anyone who's not a zombie also yes. gets one shot. Yeah. So dies. that's and that's super hard because she doesn't cast that until the final phase, and then like mm -hmm. you're used to doing your normal system of having the zombie, like you know, switching the zombies out, and then so now you need zombies. Anymore. And then yeah, and then you need to have at least one zombie on your team, and then she'll fuck. And then she does like Mega Death, full heal. So it's like. Yeah. You're just like, Jesus and confused. Christ. So and she also uh, throws regen in there, too. So, like, if you're right, her a zombie back regen. Up. Yeah, if you're not doing enough damage, she'll fucking... Uh... Oh, no. That does... That's on you she guys. Has... That's on you yeah, guys. Yeah, she has regen on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. You, always, you also take constant you're taking damage. AO, yeah, you're, you're taking a DOT on zombie characters. Unless you heal it, and then you start getting healed, and then she just casts Mega Death in your ass again, so you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Do you remember that fucking uh, underwater dragon fight where you can just use Phoenix Downs on it? Yeah, you just throw a Phoenix down on his yeah. ass and it dies and do hits. Yeah, dude. Like, I think My like first playthrough, I didn't know about that, so I, I fought it legit. And it took like half an hour because I didn't have anyone else or an Riku to heal up. Actually, Riku's in that party. Uh, yeah, it's only it's Riku, have... it's Riku, Waka, and uh, Titus. Yeah, fight. Lulu or Orin, so I didn't have any big damage because Waka is not at the point where he's like overpowered as hell. So is, like one is the everything. strongest character in the game Waka? I th he's always my strongest at the end of the game for some reason. Like I even looked at his sphere grid, and like the end of his sphere grid is just like littered with like plus four strength, plus four strength, plus four. Yeah, but he also strength. has those so the super the lame like element uh, attacks with his ball, and like if you like, oh, triple his, threat, uh, like triple threat, overdrive? literally no triple threat. That move where it gives you like blind, poison, and blah blah blah. Darkness. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, that move literally does not work on half the enemies in the game. So it's like yeah, because at the end of the game, like, everyone's immune to like it, every, everyone's immune to. And I think that's a fucking bullshit thing. I think in fucking games like that that have status effects, like you, enemies should be susceptible to some at all times. Different ones, like each yeah. enemy should be susceptible to different ones, and you have to figure that out. But I don't think that they should just be nullified. Like and near and, and like when you hit the midpoint of that fucking game. Statuses just no longer work. It's just fucking pointless. Like, there's no reason. To Only certain statuses. ones, like poison, do. <clears throat> so but I was not a huge fan. Like, of that. He's so, always continue. all the statuses are pretty good. Like, you can throw a silent strike on an elemental, and it'll basically make it useless. Yeah, I I, I like to spec Waka into Orin's tree, like. And like, like right when he starts getting that elemental shit, I just fucking go put him into orange tree for health and damage, just straight up. Oh really? Yeah, because it's just like, why not make him like orange but like ranged? I mean, fuck it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, my okay. So now that we're on the topic of fucking uh, characters, who's your favorite character in the game? Waka. Yeah, <laughs> Waka. Waka. Waka is also my favorite character. <laughs> I was hoping. Uh, Maddie would be here because I wanted to know what her favorite one is. I don't know who her favorite character is, but Waka is literally the eternal coolest fucking guy ever, dude. Yeah. I fucking love Waka. He's fucking great. He's like the mm -hmm. first major dude you meet. Like you meet Riku first, but you don't know who she is, and it's fucking pretty quick. But like Waka is the guy that you meet first. He becomes He's your bro. He's your bro. He's your best friend. And I loved just Waka. I love Waka. Every fucking scene that Waka is in, solid. 100%. Makes every scene he's in better. Yeah. Love him. Love him. That's, I probably, I think probably the first time that I played, I maxed out, I did his friendship. Because uh, I, I always talk to Waka first. I was like, oh man, we're at a new part. I'm going to go talk to Waka and see what he has to say about it. <laughs> and then like, I didn't know there was that weird, super friendship hidden system. friendship mechanic until like, yeah. my second playthrough so like then i was kind of picking and it's so weird like what does it change exactly the friendship system it changes cutscenes and titus's last overdrive so like really? during the uh, snowmobile cutscene depending on who has your highest uh friendship you can get like or and kamari riku or lulu i got lulu i think yeah on my first playthrough i got lulu because i always went to talk to her because i thought she was hot yeah dude were you like 12 <laughs> 
Yeah, I was 12. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was talking to her too, but I was like fucking 18, 19. <laughs> She's timeless, dude. She's timeless. Nothing wrong with fucking yeah. Lulu, dude. But but then I knew about the friendship system, so the second time I got Aura, and then on the pre- most previous playthrough, I got Riku, since I like grinded her friendship right away, and I want to okay. get her cutscenes. Oh, yeah. Now, Riku has the strongest overdrive in, in the game, correct? As far as utility, yeah. Not, like, raw damage numbers. What's the raw damage one? Well, like, once you get maxed out and you're doing, nine, like, 99k damage every hit, it oh. just depends on who has the most amount of hits in their overdrive, which goes back to Waka's uh, attack reel since he does 12 hits. Holy shit. And then second strongest would be uh, either Titus's Slice and Dice or Titus's Blitz Ace, his last overdrive, where he does, like, 10 hits. Okay. So that's like because nine 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 yeah nine 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 times ten. So okay. And then you get to Riku's and she has her overdrives like hyper mighty G where just she gives everyone like max protect max haste full life uh Holy max shit. cure everything. So I never I never got any of that shit. I was I never played it that much. I obviously I didn't I didn't one hundred percent this game. I fucking played it. I beat the story. Yeah, that's like end game stuff where you have yeah, to like look go... up a fucking you look up a spreadsheet on like oh, <laughs> exactly what you need to make. And, and I think that's super annoying. So, like, on a general playthrough, I never really use Riku. Me neither. Or just never. Never drive at because all. Because they stopped doing the fucking chest thing one mission after she's fucking introduced. Yeah. You get it once. Yeah. And, like, during an optional dungeon, it's there again. It's only there for, like, 20 x 20k extra gil. And I was just like, well, I've never seen one of these treasure chests, so she's going to be a background <clears throat> character like fucking Kimari. The worst mm-hmm. fucking character in the game. So by far the worst character. In the game. By far the worst character. But uh, one of the things I learned um, is his fight, where he fights alone those two guys. It is mm-hmm. scaled to what Kamari is at, so it's always yep. beatable no matter what. Like you don't have to fucking like level up Kamari. Like they knew that Kamari was trash, so they like they they <laughs> yeah yeah. So they made his solo moment totally doable at fucking level one. It's just going to be hard. Yeah. Like, you don't have to fucking... You don't have to have Kamari in your party at all. At you fucking all. Use no, you don't have to use him a single fucking time. And, and uh, on top of that, I, the, that same fight, those two guys know every single, like, overdrive possible for Kamari, so you can just sit there and lance at everything. And then can get, you like, really? Yeah, so you get, like, all ten of them right there. So you didn't have to use them throughout the entire game if you wanted those overdrives either. You just wait for that fight and use Lancet over wow. and over I did over. not know that. That's... Goddamn, dude. Kimari sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, paths did you take him down? There was two different paths? No, so, like, the way Kimari works is uh, oh, yeah, he, he starts in the middle and yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can make yeah. make him, like, a, a soft version of anyone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, like, which, I did which soft, I did, like, soft Aran with some fucking, um, some utility from uh, Titus and a little bit of healing from Yuna. <clears throat> oh, so you want, like, back and forth? Well, because, no, everything? because Titus's tree links up with Yuna's tree at some point. So I went oh, through okay. I went through Titus's tree into the basic Yuna stuff, and then I took him okay. I just got that, I got heal, I got all that lame shit, and then I got fucking and I just rocketed him down fucking orange tree. Bam. Fucking got him strength and okay. shit to make him just a, a beater. Cause I you know, I felt like if I'm gonna have Kamari in there, which is what a blue mage is supposed to do, they're supposed to be able to do a little bit of everything. I wanna have yep. him be a secondary Yuna. Because Yuna there's only one Yuna, you know? You've got and if two, she dies, like you have to revive her. Yeah, one hit. And fucking Waka and Aran are pretty similar in the fact that they're your heavy hitters. So, you know, and one's ranged, one is armor piercing. So that's, you know, you have two heavy hitters. You've got Titus, which is fucking useless. I don't even know, dude. He's he can attack fast enemies. But like Kimari, I took him down the strength tree and the healing tree. So that I could have him be out and do a little bit of damage, like in between fucking Waka and Titus damage, and then be able yeah. to have a little bit of utility with like cheer or uh, heal. I don't even I don't know if I got res for him, but I definitely had fucking heal for sure, for sure. <laughs> okay. What about you? My f- yeah, my first playthrough, I took him down Lulu's tree because I was Black like Magic. Lulu's. Yeah, she like. 
on my first playthrough, I thought, oh, Lulu's kicking so much ass because she basically one shots everything for half the game. Yeah. So I thought, oh, I'll just have a second one with Kamari. So I took him down there, and he was total garbage because <laughs> his magic isn't high. By the, yeah, but by the time he gets to Lulu's tree, Lulu's already ha has like the second and third tier magic spells. So like. Just having him cast basic water and fire is basically like him sneezing on the enemy. And doing nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> yes! But, like, the most success I had was obviously when I took him down Waka's path right away. Yeah. So he's basically just like a slightly tankier Waka at that point. Mm -hmm. And he, he was decent for like two thirds of the game, but then he just became trash again. So I really don't know how to make him good at all. Because he just doesn't scale well because of his fucking yeah. settings. So he, he's always going to be a less than version of whatever you put him into. And, in, and he, you never need, like, a second backup character of, like, anyone else. No, you don't. You just pop him out and then you, you like... And, okay, so now we're on the fucking battle system. So this <laughs> is one of my favorite battle systems in any JRPG ever. I am a fan of classic turn-based fighting. I'm not a huge fan of ATB. I prefer where speed or whatever, whatever dictates what their turns are going to be. And then you all take a paused turn. And then it goes sequentially. Fucking this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. And that's it. I'm a big fan of that. I don't think ATB speeds up the game at all. I think that fucking pure turn-based is just fine. And I love, when I first played Final Fantasy X, and I was able to hot swap out characters at any time... That fucking exploded my mind. Because it's usually, you have yeah. to, like with Persona, you have to pick the people that go into the dungeon, and that's it. You have, to, you, you have to use those three or four characters. I don't remember what their party size is. I think it's four or three. I don't know. I think it's four. Four. So you have to use those characters. And then you have to go back to the hub, switch your characters out, and go back in if you want to use a different character. And I didn't like that. I liked in Final it Fantasy takes, X. It takes where you, time to go out there and switch them out, right? Yeah. You know, and it's bullshit. When in Final Fantasy X, it's just like, oh, well, you know what? Uh, Kimari's no longer useful. I'm going to swap him out. Or, oh, this enemy is not good for Titus. I'm going to swap him out, put Waka in. And, oh, we got a magic enemy. I'm going to fucking put Lulu in. And you could do that on the fly. It blew my mind. I was, I was fucking using that shit all day. And you have to. You have to use the hot swap system in the later fights in the game, or you will lose. And I liked that that was the way that the combat system was. Yeah, it's just like... It helps you, like, kind of game the game in a sense. It's like, okay, like, you get into a fight and you have an armored guy, a, a flan, and some fast guys. And it's like, oh, well, I have Yuna, Riku, and Walkout, so I'll just swap Yuna out so I can get Orin in here to one-shot this armored guy. Yep. And and then use, use Riku. Maybe she gets two turns in before the enemy, so she can maybe use an item and then swap out somebody else so then they can come in and one-shot somebody else. Mm -hmm. it, it just it makes you feel smart for actually using it that's like, that's what as, i because i felt intended. i felt like i was and people got on uh final fantasy X's case like with that the combat was that it was like match the player the character up to the enemy and i don't yeah. see anything wrong with that because all games devolve devolve into that where you you remember oh this enemy is weak to uh to uh wind magic so you just use wind magic on it like, every JRPG is like that. Final Fantasy X is no different. It just gives you, like, this, oh, well, I'm going to put in this guy because he's he's strong against that. And it does make you feel like you're more involved. I, I liked it because you had to remember the enemies. Like, oh, this is an armored enemy. Like, you don't know that it's armored, like, right away. But you rem remember the shape of that enemy and you go, oh, that's an armored enemy. Or, oh... That yeah, little... It kind of becomes obvious later in the game when you, like, see your fifth recolor of the armor guy. It's yeah. like, yeah. pretty good chance that's an armor guy. Yeah, and the, the fifth recolor of, like, the magical spinny thing that flies yeah. in the air that's the an elemental. element. Yeah, the elemental thing. So, like, you're just gonna, oh, well, duh, Lulu is just gonna pop in, do the opposite element, and fucking kill that guy. One, One shot. It. Yeah, and, and that's what the whole game is. And I'm fine with that, and I liked that, because I it, it feels like you're... You've learned the game. You know, it wasn't yeah. just like, it wasn't handing it to you. Like, if you didn't remember that little tutorial it gave you in the beginning or you were not paying attention. Dude, I've used, uh, I've used Titus against the armored guys sometimes because, like, uh, Auron's dead or doing something else. And, like, you know, he does, like, five damage. And then Auron comes in and one-shots that motherfucker. 
Yeah, and it's awesome. Because he needed to get Titus in there to get some XP on his sorry ass. So he used to get him to play, like, <laughs> Dude, Titus like, is kind of useless. Like, he can attack Well, he's only there to kill the dogs. That's it. Yeah. And so, you know, but like every other character is strong against an enemy or a utility. Except, like, I would say that the three weakest characters, Riku, Titus, Kamari. Or Titus, Riku, Kamari, in that order. Like, or, you know... Like, I'll say so, yeah. I would say, you know, Kamari's, like, the, the least powerful one, and Titus is the best one. Um, and then, like, you know, those, the rest of the characters all have a perfect utility against an enemy or something <laughs> in the game. They're perfect. And they and they have, they come up yeah. a lot. And they're very useful. But they're also useful against other enemies ha if things happen. Like, Waka can fucking kill an armored enemy. No problem. He can kill mm -hmm. a elemental enemy too if you have an elemental ball on him or you use one of his fucking elemental attacks. Like, yeah, there there are certain situations when I purposely put Orin in just so I can armor break an enemy, so then I can make Waka go in and one shot it instead of Orin, because <laughs> because Waka was just more powerful. Huh. Okay. Yeah. See, or even I mean. uh, armor break break like an elemental, so you can just use Waka to kill that thing instead <laughs> of having <Luluk. laughs> Yeah. Hell yeah. Now. Yeah, because every character that jumps into the fight, they don't have to do anything. They just have to spend one moment in the fight, and then the, they get XP, correct? They have to do something. So oh, they have like to attack. Defend. They have to attack or defend. Yeah, right. or use an item. Or use an item. Just part participate at all. Participate, yeah. So it's not like Pokemon where uh, you can pop them in, pop them out, and then no. they get XP. They actually, yeah, okay, I'm remembering that now, yeah. Okay. No. And, and even then, like... Uh... XP doesn't get distributed equally across your party. It's like if you use one guy or seven guys, each person's still getting like a thousand XP. Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of encourages you, even for all the scrub fights, to basically just swap everybody. Pop in so every can... single character, have them attack an enemy that they're not good with, and then pop them out so that the end of the real guys can come in, rape everything in one hit, and then the, yep. the fight's done. And yeah, I, I did that a lot. I did yeah, that a it's not lot. There's no reason why you shouldn't do that. No, there's like an amount of XP for the fight, and then if the more people you put in, the more XP you're getting out of it, basically. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Yeah, <laughs> I was I was a bit. But to go back that. to Titus, it's like he has two things that are good for him, and one of them is he gets a guaranteed run away from the enemy. Yep. <laughs> See ya. And uh. Live and let live. Yeah. <laughs> and his, his second part is uh, he gets haste and haste dodge, which is like probably the two best Lit. in the game. That those moves, yep. oh boy. Oh, and he gets and he gets slow, which is also really good. Yeah, but slow stops working. Uh, yeah, because you know most bosses kind of mean, but right. But obviously. haste haste is just the opposite of that. But it's just for you directly. So yeah, I would always pop him in. I'd haste everybody that was in the party. Probably it's typically like. It was typically Titus, Waka, and Auron, typically, because I wanted to get the heavy hits in as soon as I could. I'd Hostega, and I'd fucking, I'd smack as much as I could before I had to start hot <laughs> swapping people out. And yeah, because you, you, you know have Auron to... needs haste because uh, he goes from getting, like, one hit every now and then to, like, he's maybe the fourth. He's hit. the fourth or fifth person at the end of the game. Because he's so, he's so slow. Yeah. So, and the... I hate one of the things I hated was um, if you put in a new character, you had to haste them too. But like, luckily yep. they kept their haste if they popped out. I'm pretty sure. So like, they'd pop back yeah, in and they'd still be hasted. Yeah. So you pop people in and out as fast as you can, get them all hasted up, you know, and then you do your turns as much as you can. Yeah, I yeah. Near the end of the game, you literally had Titus in on the first <laughs> round to get the first two people hasted and Titus hasted. And then you started hot swapping people out and getting them hasted and using as many moves as you could. Yeah. That was intense. I would dude. do for some of the later <laughs> boss fights is I would have uh, Titus and Riku and somebody else in right away. Because, like, since Riku has, like, the highest agility in the game, when you yeah. when you haste her, she gets, like, three or four moves in, like, every single round. So wow. once I she gets hasted, I would, just, I would just move her back out, and then I would basically move her in <laughs> whenever I needed, like, a lot of item usage. Like, I... a lot of Phoenix Downs or a lot of Seriously, I don't think I ever thought about that. I, I never Probably really would have noticed. helped you for the final fight. God damn, dude. I kept asking you, because we were in the call during, like, when I was fighting that bug, the bug where you can't die, when you can't lose. 
I kept asking you, Evan. I was like, dude, are you sure that I can't lose? And you're like, bro, just, you'll be fine. Like, your characters are going to die, and then they're going to regenerate. Just keep going. Yep. And I'm like, dude, like, I've got one person left. <laughs> like, I'm scared. And you're like, it's, it's fine. <laughs> like, you, you literally, like, once you get past, like, once you hit that point, the game is over. You just have to finish that fight. So. Yep. You just fun. have, like, one puzzle boss at the end, and that's about it. Yeah, that, oh, God, it felt so good. To, okay, so, um, one of the things I loved about, like, I like about Final Fantasy in general, but I really liked about Final Fantasy X was the CG cutscenes. The fucking oh, AMVs. Yeah. Fucking love every single fucking AMV in that game. Love them. They still look really good today. Dude, that's amazing, right? Like, they look mm -hmm. incredible. They look fuck, dude. When I was like, oh god, like back before I even knew what Final Fantasy was, I swear to God, I'm I'm 99 sure I listened to a, a music like a song on YouTube and it had AMVs from fucking Final Fantasy 10 in it. Like I saw that too. <laughs> yeah, dude. That was that was YouTube was like... in like 2006, dude. It was fucking AMVs, anime music videos. Yeah, I was looking up like a RuneScape music video and they used like a song in the credits. I was like, this song's pretty good. Let me look it up. So I looked it up and then I saw a Final Fantasy music video of that song. So I was like, oh my God. So I watched it before I even knew what Final Fantasy was. And then I saw like just all the, all the, all the videos of the Final Fantasy X and like Titus and Unit kissing. I was like, this game looks uh, pretty good. Yeah, dude. Like the Blitzball. So it always there, shows, it always shows the Blitzball scene in the beginning when he's doing like the, the, the water, scene. the yeah. water, the kissing. And then the uh, when they're going into the city and they're riding on those ropes, that's the fucking. Yep. Those are the three yep. that are in every single Final Fantasy X AMV that has ever existed. Also, that uh, scene at the end when Yuna runs at Titus, but and he disappears. disappears and oh, and falls down. oh, and Yuna doing the sending. Yuna doing the sending. Yeah. that's so basically every single uh... <laughs> every single AMV, every single <laughs> FMV is in an AMV. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but dude, okay, but those are so good. Like, I always thought they were like a great way to like break up, and and really like to me, they brought me more into the game instead of bringing me out. Like, I feel like when they did those moments, like when they chose to uh, do certain moments with an FMV, um, it brought me into the game more because like you those moments, like the sending, I think is like one of the first major major one. Well, the the blitz ball in the beginning, but. I think for me, like, the Yuna sending one was, like, huge. Like, that one's, like, really important. You know, it really mm -hmm. shows, like, that's, like, a like a big point in the story. It's kind of an, emotion, an emotional scene, too. It is, yeah, it is. So it's, like, a big, it's a big moment for all the characters. It's a big moment for the story. It's just, like, it's really important to everyone at that moment. And I think that, like, <clears> when, they, when they switch to the FMV and she starts doing, like, the twirl, which, by the way, her doing the sending is the Japanese cover for uh, Final Fantasy. <laughs> 10 uh is her yeah, the, the, wave. the logo yeah which uh, is fucking sick as fuck i love that um but that scene like it always just it brought me in more and i think a lot of people like when it switches that like the quality like their brain like shuts off they're like oh like i got taken out of like the game but like for me it, it thrusts me in more because they're they're choosing to <laughs> do an emotional moment in a higher quality so you can be like this is what it really looks like like the video game is kind of like a ps2 game but when you get that FMV, it's like, dude, this is like what real fucking life looks like. It looks fucking awesome. Yeah, the way I see it is like, um, <clears throat> uh, in Final Fantasy, what is it, twelve? Like when they do the FMVs, like the thing I notice is like all the characters look extremely different in the FMVs than they do actual in game. Mm -hmm. So when I watch them, I'm like, you know, if this is like a a really highly produced like cinematic thing, this is probably what the characters should look like Actually except they don't like. because yeah yeah so when i look at like final Fan fantasy 10 i see like titus he's like a lot more tanner and he has like an actual good looking face as opposed yeah. to in game i'm like okay yeah. this is probably what he's supposed to look like but right. they just couldn't do that in game for some reason right because like the polygon count is lower and they're like literally animating every single moment it's a full motion video like it's literally like hand animated like the whole thing yeah so like that's the point you know like he looks completely fucking different titus we're talking about yeah. titus right now from his fmvs yeah. and his in-game and they really tried uh -huh. to make him look more like his fmv in the uh the remasters 
But I think that like a lot of stuff looked a lot worse in the remasters. I think the menus, like the colors of the menus looked like more impersonal. I just didn't like the colors they used. I think the characters look like worse than they did on PS2. I, I think Titus think... looks a lot worse than the remaster. Oh yeah. Yuna I think yeah, Yuna and Titus look terrible in the remaster. So like I as much as I wanted to get the remaster cuz like I just want to like have uh Final Fantasy 10 on like my Xbox cuz it's coming out to Xbox like this year or it's already out. Yeah, I would just I would just get it. I know. I mean, but it's just like I love the way that they look on PS2. It they look so perfect to me on PS2. And maybe it's nostalgia goggles. But I do think that they look the I don't best on PS2. It's just like he their faces just look more um like human. Like in the remaster of Titus with his like neon blue eyes, he just looks like a typical video game character. Uh-huh. And in uh the regular game, he looks like he actually has a personality. Yeah, he looks human, sense. he looks soft, he looks he looks normal, like a dude who was ripped out of his planet into yeah, a new he, planet. He doesn't look like a typical anime character. Yeah, he doesn't look like the hero of a of a of an anime game, you know. Mm. And I, I like that. I I really like. I have to be like a lot of people don't like Titus, and I know I know for a fact, one hundred percent. We had to talk about it. It comes from the ha 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 scene. <laughs> One hundred percent. The people who don't like Titus, they they don't like him because of that scene, and I think that it's completely unfair because the people who are judging that scene that way do not understand that scene. I think that they're they just don't get it because that scene is actually very very deep and very very good in the development of both Yuna's character and Titus's character, and the furthering of the plot as a whole. Because if you look at that scene, and you compare it to what happens at the end of the game, that's one of the pivotal moments that, like, shows, like, they they want to change. They want to do something else. Like, the, the final sending, all this stuff, it's super fucking sad, dude. And their whole mission is a suicide mission, and Titus only finds that out fucking way later. He just thinks that fucking Yuna's just sad. Because she has to, the weight of the world is on her shoulders, but... She actually has to fucking die. And so that scene is like this really magical moment for Yuna where she gets to like laugh the pain away. She gets to fake laugh. It's a fake laugh to start. But like they're just goofing off and then they actually start laughing. And it's like, I think it's like one of the only moments in the entire game where Yuna is actually not serious. And I think people misjudged that scene and they took it as some like the voice acting is bad. Like, yeah, dude, it's a big, stupid, fake laugh. Like, that's the point, man. It doesn't sound good because he's like, like <laughs> hacking it up, man. He's just memeing. Yeah, and to go more into that, like a lot of it's just Yuna's uh, character throughout the game where she's basically like an entirely selfless person where she's like, I need to go on this pilgrimage because I need to be the one or not I need to be the one, but I need to save all these people from this entire destruction cycle that is Spear and Sin. Mm -hmm. So, and because Titus doesn't know that she's basically going to die at the end, she's basically able to have fun with Titus at this moment because he doesn't realize the entire circumstance of the situation. Right, he's just like, hey man, this girl's cute, I'm going to help her with whatever's fucking going on, you know? I'm down. Uh, I'll be a fucking, I'll be a guy, you know? I'll be a, a guardian. And, you know, it, it is a big moment because we find out for the first time with Titus that she dies at the end of all yep. of this. And we go, what? Like, I was literally like, what the fuck do you mean, bro? Like, she's kind of like my waifu right now. Like, how dare you <laughs> take that away from me? <laughs> you know? And and that's why I think it's really cool to do, like, another playthrough of this game because I know you only played through it once because then you start to look at all those other scenes where, like, you realize that Yuna's gonna die, but you know that Titus doesn't know, and since Titus is your, like, it's your you. point in this in this world, yeah, and especially since you get to rename Titus, like, it's your character, even though 
he should have a name because it, it's weird that they never actually talk, uh, say his name throughout the entire game. Right. It works, though. It surprisingly actually works, yeah. the fact they don't ever say his name. Yeah, but, like, <clears throat> there's there's all these scenes where, like, oh, you know, Yuna's having this uh, moment on the grass and she's just... Oh, saying, God, oh, dude! Wandering Flame kicks in? Dude. Yeah. Literally the best song in the game. Literally one of the best moments in the game. Continue. Sorry, just had to yeah, so, had to so, throw my fucking faith. Dude, I listen to that song on the like every like, every once in a while. Like that song is so goddamn good. Fuck. Yeah, and then and then that scene and a lot of the other scenes when like Yuna's just sitting there and Titus in his like autistic moment. Like, <laughs> hey, like hey Yuna, let's go to Xander camp. Like I'll show you all the cool stuff at Xander can eat Yuna and like. You know, it's like, well, I'm gonna be dead, but I can't tell him that, so I'm just gonna smile and basically laugh with him. Yeah, and 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 we time. don't know that Xanarkin doesn't exist until like, fucking sixty percent of the way through the game. Like they go, yeah. dude, Xanarkin is fucking, it's fucking gone, bro. And you're just like, <laughs> holy shit, <laughs> what do you mean, like? And then you know, and that was one of the things I didn't get. I always thought he was a time traveler, but he's actually not. A, you know, he, we already fucking we spent twenty minutes on that shit in the beginning. But like, that's a big moment because he goes, "Oh, like I'm never ever going back, ever. Mm -hmm. I'm here." Like I, he literally experiences exactly what his father experiences. Like the same yep. thing, dude. He gets ripped out of his world. He gets made a real thing, and he has to fucking save the world. And it's a daunting task because, dude, he's a douchebag blitzball player for fucking most of the game. He's like, oh, blitzball? We used to play this back home with the Xanarkin Abes. And then it's like, the Xanarkin Abes? Who the fuck is that, dude? And he's just like, Xanarkin Abes! And he's just, you know, and you that's us because we don't know either. Like, I want to be a blitzball player. Like, I like blitzball. Fucking, you're like, yeah, dude, Titus, like, blitzball, whatever. And then you're just like, dude, you're home. You're home. It's gone, bro. It's been gone for ages. Like, yeah, uh, there, there's another scene that you probably don't know when they're, like, on the river. And I think Blue Orange says, like, yeah, at nighttime, like, all the fireflies gather here. And it looks really beautiful. And Titus is like, hey, I have an idea. And they're like, we're not staying here at night. And then Titus is like, all right, well. Once we defeat Sin, we're coming back here. And then he does his, like, little flex with his, like... Yeah! This thing. Yeah! And then, and then no one says anything, and they just, like, walk away, and he's, like, looks kind of disappointed. And yeah, so, like, like, on your... Because you, cause you always think, like, why is everybody such a dick, bro? Like, I know I'm yeah. kind of goofy. Like, I know he's, like, I know Titus is kind of goofy. Like, he's, like, blah, blah, blah. But, like, you really get the gravity of those moments once you find out everybody fucking dies, dude. Yeah, and then on the second time you play through and he says, like, like Titus, please, like, shut up, man. <laughs> like, like, dude, this is really deep right now, dude. Like, everybody's <laughs> accepting their death. Like, the Pyreflies are literally the embodiment of dead souls. And it's like, we're coming back. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to have a party here. Yeah. We'll take the sin. Let's have a barbecue. Yeah. And it's just like, dude. You know, and I love that, though. And it's really great to, you know, a lot of games, they, they try to make you the character. Like, they really want you, like, you know, you, the person you play is you. Like, they, they can put everything on you, and you can learn with characters. Like, the best way to get you involved in a game is to make you learn with the character you're playing with. Yep. And I feel that in this game, you really do. Like, you don't see the moments. Like... On your second playthrough when you get to the ha-ha-ha scene, it makes way more fucking sense. Because, like, it's the first moment in her whole life, her whole life, where someone is making light of this perilous <clears throat> journey. Like, a journey yep. that does not end happily. A sad ending. He's the first person to ever go, just laugh it off. Like, what's the big deal? Like, you're so stressed all the time. Let's just have, like, a nice moment, you know? Like this, we, we just fought, like you just get done fighting Marlboro. That's the fucking, that's the boss you just fight right before that scene or right after that scene. I don't know. But you, like that What's moment, the, the big, the laughing scene, you fight like that boss, that poison plant boss, Marlboro. Um, the one oh, that, okay. And then you, you get that sweet scene. And it's just like, yep. dude, like you really, on your second playthrough, because I, I have gotten like most of the way through on my second playthroughs, I always just get caught up playing Blitzball, and I just like 
I play it for like five hours and then I just don't ever, I don't, and then I just stop playing. <laughs> Cause like I just I just like to play blitz ball. Like I just I'm done blitzball. with the game now. I yeah. played enough blitz ball. I played like I was like, all right, I'm gonna move the story forward. I get to a save sphere and I just fucking play blitz ball for like six hours. I'm like, okay, well, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm going to bed. <laughs> but you know that moment. I just I, I always think about that moment because every fucking time people talk about Final Fantasy X, they go, oh dude, that fucking laughing scene was terrible. I was like, you guys clearly have never had. A moment like that in your life where you have to fake it till you make it and like or, the, or they haven't even played the game or they haven't played the yeah <laughs> i mean who would just lie on the internet <laughs> not me <laughs> so it was just always so it had gravity to me the first time i played it i was like this is really like a beautiful thing that like titus is doing like you know just laugh through the pain just just turn your pain into happiness just ignore it bury it you know we can have a good moment despite what's going on. And I, I really liked that. I love the laughing scene. I think it's fucking great. I really do. I think it's fucking great. And like, uh, to like finish off Yuna's character, it's like the few times she actually does something in her life where she basically gets to enjoy herself is basically with Titus. Yeah, that's why it's and, such a beautiful love it, story. And I think it's really cool at the end when like, you know, Titus is like the one part in her life that she really enjoys, and he gets taken away from her at the oh, end because, like, brutal. they stop dreaming about him. So she just falls down, cries, or like, she says, cry, a tear comes out. Dude, yeah. okay, so there's two different things that she said. Do you know about this? At the end? No, when, when he disappears, there are okay. in the Japanese version and the English version, she says two different things. Do you know what they are? I don't know these. Go ahead. So in, I think in the, okay, in the English version, she says, I love you, right? I think so. Okay. Not sure about it. All right. In the Jap, in one of the versions, she says, I love you. And one of the, in one of the other versions, she says, thank you. And I think that. I think English is thank you. Is it? I think so. Okay. I'm not too sure though. Because I think that thank you is much better than I love you. I really do. Like, thank you for everything. Like, thank you for, like, love. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for saving the world. Thank you for the moments that you gave me. And she's essentially saying goodbye with by saying thank you instead of I love, I you. love you also. Yeah. Because by said, saying I love you, it's kind of implied that she still wants him. Right. Or, uh, yep. or, that, or, that, or that he might come back. But with thank yeah. you, it is a goodbye. It is a, it's, it yeah. feels like a hard cut. Where it's, you have done so much for me and mankind and my friends and your friends and, and everyone in the world and me personally. And, you know, just thank you for everything that you've done. And he didn't even need to be those things or, you know, because he's not, he's literally not the hero. Yuna is the hero. He is just like mm -hmm. a dude who's part of it. You know, that's why it's always so funny when he goes, it's yeah. my story. And... Mm. I just love that. And, and, you know, she says thank you to someone who helped drive her to do the final <laughs> killing of Sid, which I think, I think it is the final killing. According to X2, it is the yeah. final. Yeah. It is the final uh, finishing of Sin. So what a, what a game X2 is. <laughs> Still haven't uh, beaten that fucking game. You, you can keep my copy. I still want to play that. <laughs> Um, but I do think that, uh, <laughs> I do think that thank you is a much better sort of final, um, statement. I do too, I but do. then like X2 comes and then Titus comes back and he, so kind of so like. I never beat that. Does he it. actually come back? Yep. When does his head if get he... exploded by that ball? Oh, that's in the alternate, uh, I wouldn't say alternate universe, but that's in the like book the, in the middle, right? The book the in the novel. middle. Yeah, the, the novel. Yeah. yeah, when he kicks the blitz ball and his head flies off. <laughs> Have you seen those gifts online of like where he just kicks the ball and his the fucking head flies off? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he kicks the ball and just goes flying away. <laughs> oh my god, dude! Oh my god, I cannot believe that like that is some sort of like semi-true fucking event in, <laughs> in canon. It's fucking cannon. Oh my god, dude. That's terrible. Um so But um wait, to go back to Titus's character, like 
you said like oh people who don't like him d who don't like his character comes from the laughing scene always i didn't like i didn't like him like throughout half of the game just because i thought he was like an autismo like doc who was okay so it's like for a main character like let's take vaughn in final fantasy 12 like vaughn is like an inoffensive like guy who grew up in the slums and you you can kind of like relate to him because he's like kind of just a doing nobody. what he has to do to survive and all that yeah so even though vaughn is like useless throughout the story at least i'm not like offended by anything bond does but with titus like titus is the main character and he's supposed to be like your shining pillar of who you are yeah, and since we see the world through titus's eyes it's kind of, it was kind of hard for me playing through the game at least the first time to like kind of relate to titus and be like titus is a good character because basically until he learns that yuna's gonna die he's just going around going like let's go to xanarkin like when you play Blitzy Blitz to win. You know, and that's like, fair though, because like the dude gets like, because, but, but you know, and I understand, like you just said, like he only becomes like a real character once he understands the fact that like Xanarkin does not exist and hasn't existed. And he kind of has to like. Once he realizes like everything he's been doing in the world is like not good because he's basically been like giving you all this false hope. Right. Even though, was, even though she died. Yeah. I... Once he realizes that he he messed up, like he becomes a really good character because then he kind of like channels his inner autism into going like, okay, how can I save Yuna at the end? Which is like admirable because I could start like actually get on getting on Titus' side and be like, yeah, dude, you figure that out. I I honestly liked Titus from the very beginning. I liked him. I liked, I like, I, the only thing I don't like about Titus is his outfit. That's it. You don't, you don't like what? I don't like his outfit. I was not a big fan oh. of his design. His, that, his that's what I liked. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I didn't like the one longer mesh leg and like the, the, like, I liked, I just didn't like that. He's like wearing like overalls. Like I can pull this shit up. Like, let me, I'm pretty sure he's wearing like some sort of weird, yeah. like coveralls. Let me do it on my, let me do it on my fucking. It looks like he had two different shorts on. Like yeah. one of them like three inches above his knee and like below his knee yeah dude yeah yeah, yeah. i'm looking at a picture <laughs> of him right now dude like he's got like the weird like overall thing like i wasn't a big fan of that i wasn't a fan of like the big like one longer leg thing i'm cool with like the cool looking arm i like the arm i've always I like been the a yellow fan. jacket i like the jacket i like the arm i like the top hat i just don't like the it slips in design for me the second we get to those fucking coveralls. <laughs> okay. But fucking Jack's design is pretty fucking sick. Let me look up mm. Jack real quick. Yeah. The giant J tattoo on his chest. Dude, Jack is so sick. His outfit, dynamite. Like, he looks like a super cool surfer dad who's also, like, the greatest blitzball <laughs> player of all time. I wish you could unlock Jack for fucking Blitz in the game. That'd be fucking dope. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. He looks so fucking boss. Looks so sick. Jack, dude, Jack is cool. So, like, okay. We're going to talk about fucking uh, that scene on the boat where, where you get the Jack shot. So, like, I didn't get the Jack shot in my first playthrough of the game. I didn't get it because, like, that QTE was pretty... That was pretty tough for me. Like, you can't do it, loser, baby, yeah, cry, baby. Yeah, you're, just to, you're just like, Especially dude. Especially once you lose, he's like, I knew you couldn't do it. I knew you couldn't do it. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> just pissed off. And I loved, loved that. Like, I, uh, because it's like that perfect manifestation. And then, like, the second time, I fuck, I killed it, bro. I just killed it. And it's just, oh, and I found out actually, I think uh, like 60 or 70% of the way through my first playthrough that you can go back to the boat and get it. Yeah. Or you can just retry just... over and over and over again. Yep. So I think I, I did get it, but I didn't get it that first time where you like, you're supposed to do it, conquer, you know, Jack's insecurities that he's placed on you. And then you get hmm. like one of the best moves <clears throat> in the fucking game when it comes to Blitzball. The Jack shot. Oh. So well, especially actually no sorry it's the jack shot mark three. Oh, sorry okay well that's the proper bad. name for it 
Uh, and there is no Mark 1 or Mark 2. They make very good mention of letting you know that. So that, like, it adds to the allure of Jack's character. Because he's like, oh, he just made it up for the fans. Love it, dude. Jack was a showman. Showman. Through and through. Literally the greatest blitzball player that's ever lived. Hands down. Yeah, it's, it's like your first time playing through that. It's like this cutie and you don't really think much of it once you fail. You're like, okay, well, I could probably just do it again later. But immediately after that, it's a blitzball game where you, basically, where you basically need that jet shot in order to win. So, and if you don't get it, like, you're just screwed. It's super hard. I did it without the jet uh, shot. It just fucking, I literally, I think I re I was sitting with fucking Quentin. It's back when we were living together. I literally, we were sitting together just chilling. We were both just hanging out and I was playing that blitzball tournament for the first time. I reset my PlayStation 2, I think, 15 times. I would just click the fucking reset button and just do it again. Because, like, once they get, like, two points on you, it's over. So you have to, like, yeah, you, you have to get the first two points and then just swim your dudes around and pass all for the rest of the game. And, like, or I'd be on the goalie. Or I, did, I actually never knew about that until I fucking... I don't ever use that strategy. I didn't know about it until way later. But I've never used that cheap horse trash strategy. I won that fucking Blitzball tournament using pure goddamn skill. And I want to be commended oh. for it because I did not go behind that fucking goalie box. I swam around and just passed for fucking the whole rest of the game and just played hella hard defense and just like it was it was I just tried to I tried to keep control of the ball as much as possible. Like I'd get control of the ball, I'd fucking swim back to my side and pass. So that was my strategy. And then, like, you get, like, it, it doesn't even amount to fucking anything except for a tiny cutscene where they hold up the fucking metal. But it still felt good to make Waka proud, you know? Like, you get to have, like, the fucking, uh, the b Sade Aurochs win their first thing, like, with Titus. I was just a big fan of that because, like, I just really liked Waka. And it was his yeah, so, final like, game and shit like that. Let's talk about, like, the story inclusion of Blitzball, like, real quick. So. Okay. I love like it. the first third of the game revolves around like you going to Luca for the Blitzball tournament, yes. right? Yep. And like throughout all that, you're like Titus is going around me like we can't like what does he do when he goes to like the B State Oryx? He's like, what are we gonna do? And they say try our best. He's like, what? That's what losers think. <laughs> they say, what are we gonna do? You say win. we're gonna win. So, like, the game's setting you up, like, oh, they're totally going to win this Blitzball tournament, right? Because, like, you have the you have the opposing team talking trash. You have the announcer talking mm -hmm. trash. You being like, oh, and you have the main character saying we're going to fucking game win. In 15 years. Yeah. And so you think that it's going to be, like, just the easiest shit in the world. And it's literally fucking no. dog shit <laughs> impossible. That shit is so fucking hard. So fucking hard. It, 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 it's so totally rigged against you. Like, in every way. The team has, like... Their team has like almost double your stats. Oh no! Like, they're, I think and they're like the they're shooters. five levels ahead of you. They're like everyone on the fucking Oryx is level one. I think they have level three, four, and five. Part of oh, what's that team? Um, Luca Goers. The Goers. The Goers are level or like at least three times your level in terms of raw, just like what their level is, dude. It's they're yeah. faster. <clears throat> they're stronger. They have their their break potential is stronger. Their passing skill is str everything. It is. So hard to get that fucking those that you all you need is one goal. Honestly, like you can probably I fucking know. win with one goal, but I think I did it with two, two to one, and it was within fucking. I think the ball was in the fucking air headed towards Keepa when the timer fucking stopped and we won. <laughs> like, dude. And you're like, oh, thank God. <laughs> thank God. After 15 resets and about an hour and a half or two hours of that shit, yeah, dude. Fucking, it felt incredible. Because my, my first playthrough, I went through the same thing. I was like, well, the story wants me to win, right? So I have to win this, even though I, I can tell I, I can lose because I had seen the cutscene after. Right. But I reset it after the cutscene because I was like, I want to win this because it makes sense story-wise. Yeah. And it, it took me like 10 tries also, but... Yeah. I love it. It was, it was super hard just because yeah. I wanted Waka to feel Be happy. proud of you. <laughs> yeah. I felt this. It was, uh, just, it was literally because I wanted Waka to be proud of me. That's all. Yeah. But, I, I specifically wrote this down because I I wanted to remember this. Um, one of the one of the uh, shooters on their team has thirteen shoot, and your goalie only has five catch. So like, literally, he'll anywhere, win like, every time. Yeah, if he's even like halfway across the field and he shoots, he's gonna make it in because your guy can't catch anything. But like, 
I don't know. From a game perspective, I don't like how they introduce Blitzball because it's like when you introduce a mini game, you should introduce it in a way where it's like you give your per the uh, player an easy win. And it's like they they just threw you to the wolves right away with this, especially after the uh the, like the half an hour long tutorial where you're just constantly yeah. reading text menus, about how menus, to play this menus, game. Menus, 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 yeah. menus, yeah. Menu, menu, math, math, like Dude, speed catch. The block. weird thing is, is that shit hooked me right away. Like the fact, I think that the fact that I went for the win is what really got me into Blitzball. Because, like, you can just lose. I mean, it, it was like, okay, this is a bullshit tutorial. I don't even know any of this crap, whatever. And then you lose, and you go, okay, well, I don't want to do that tutorial bullshit again. Fuck this. And you just move on, and you never you play Blitz Ball again. You touch the controller. No, you just wait. You just, you just sit. And then you yeah. can just lose, and then, like, you get this idea in your head that Blitz Ball is fucking impossible, and then you never, ever want to fucking play it again. And I get that. A lot of people don't like Blitz Ball. But in that moment where I was, like, trying to, like, learn Blitzball to win against the goers, it fucking put me in the mindset to play Blitzball. And that's, like, I literally, I could turn the game on at any moment and just play Blitzball for five hours and then just fucking turn it off and just be satisfied with me playing Final Fantasy X for the day. Yeah, and, like, <clears throat> I don't want to, like, boast or anything, but I like to think I'm... I was like above decent at most of the games that I play. So it's like when I was Damn, playing Final good Fantasy stroke X. Stroke that and, cock, Mike. <laughs> fucking I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of a big deal, yeah. <laughs> but, but like when I played Blitzball and I got my ass kicked, I was like, I'm not supposed to lose. Like, why did I lose? <laughs> that made me want to go back and beat it even more. Yeah. So I did. And then once I finally beat it, and then I was, then once I was able to finally create my own team and like, get the people I wanted, then it became easy because I actually knew what I was doing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I, I liked how it was challenging right away, even though I don't think that was the right uh, game decision no. mechanic. Bit of I also liked that it was challenging right away because I'm a fan of... I'm a, I'm a person who likes challenge in, like, 90% of their games. I like to lose and try again and, and, and think and play that way. Sometimes if I'm, I'm, I want to have a relaxing day, I'll play a relaxing game. But for the most part, I like to overcome challenges. That's like the, the reason I play video games is to smash my head against the wall and eventually win. Like, I mean, dude, the bosses in fucking Final Fantasy X are just smashing your head against the wall until you figure it out. Like, straight up. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I, I think a lot of JRPGs are like that. Unless you fucking, um, what's that, farm? Is that what it's called, farm? Grind. Grind, grind, yeah. If you grind, if, 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 then the, any game is fucking easy if you just grind. But yeah. I, I literally never like doing that. I think it's boring. I think it breaks the game. Why would I want to be level 80 at fucking the first mission? Like, that's fucking lame. I want to play the game naturally. I want to play it. And Especially I, since you have to spend, like, 30 hours grinding. And then you could play the game, and that would be really easy. Because it's just like... You, you spend like all this boring ass time grinding and then you play the game and it's and then it's boring, boring. Like, why would you I mean, spend guess, 30 guess... boring hours to have another boring fucking 30 hours like that sounds fucking horrible dude yeah i mean i mean like i you know like sorry to bring this up but i would pub stomp in tom clancy's ghost recon phantoms like all the time so i'm I, cutting this fucking I, I out of the goddamn podcast <laughs> i understand what it like the joy it, it takes to a uh, like like smash everything <laughs> yeah, for, for, yeah, yeah, okay. for a single yeah. player game i don't see the point in doing that no me neither i i'm a big fan of of the challenge i mean like normal mobs would give me trouble occasionally just because like maybe i am under leveled but you just level up to the point where you could beat those enemies and then that's like that's the normal um system of the way that the game works is like you get to an enemy that you can't beat you level up a little bit then you beat then you go on and then you reach another enemy that you can't beat you level up and you move on instead of front loading all the leveling i like to do it organically throughout the game like i feel the game is designed <clears throat> my voice is and especially in this game which i feel does the uh leveling per the best or it's like as long as you fight every single encounter you get into like the bosses for the most part for the most part yeah because like there, i would run i run runs, at like, some of those that bullshit i just like i don't want to do this right now i want to get to the next objective i would just fucking call titus and we'd ditch yeah i mean but i did do like i would say 
85% of the fights and didn't have a problem aside from, like... Like, I never had a problem with my damage output. It was more the amount of damage they were doing to me or the combo that they would do on me would be my undoing. And, like, sometimes, like, a move would come out that I wasn't expecting and I would, like, forget to do one of the steps to counteract an opponent's rhythm and then I would lose. And it was mostly my fault, but it wasn't the fault that I was, like, underleveled. I never felt underleveled in Final Fantasy X. I always felt that I was right on where I needed to be to just glide through the game for the most part until I hit a boss, which I think that's the way games should be. Bosses are supposed to be a challenging hurdle that take a little bit of time and practice and repeats. Like, that's, in my opinion, that's the way bosses should be. Yep. And they should rely on, sure, being leveled enough, but also proper strategy. Like... You know, like, you have to figure it out. Yeah, you just have to figure out the rhythm, and and that's what I like too. Is you know the rhythm might change every time you reset the game because like they might do a different move first or whatever, but like you know they're always gonna do these five moves, and then if you know oh he does this move, then he does this move, you can counteract that. And I liked that learning process. It makes your it makes my brain feel big. <laughs> but back to fucking uh, Blitzball. I think it is the greatest minigame ever designed in any game ever. And I think that uh, there are some uh, <laughs> some Gwent players like fucking Nick who's going to jump up my ass about this. Um, but I don't give a shit about Gwent. I don't give a shit about uh, Triple Triad. I don't give a shit about that weird one in Final Fantasy IX. Final Fantasy X's minigame, Blitzball, is the greatest minigame ever in a video game. Ever. The fact that I can turn the game on, not do anything with the story, which, by the way, the fact that you can, uh, that it makes sense where you can just play Blitzball um, and Sin won't blow up the world because Jack just loves Blitzball. Like, so right. you can literally just, it makes sense within the story that I played five hours of nothing but Blitzball and Jack didn't blow the world up because he fucking just loves Blitzball. So it's like, they let you, they literally designed it into the game where you can just play as much fucking Blitzball as you want. You can just keep going. You can just, all you have to do is play Blitzball, and Jack yeah, will never you, blow the uh, You get all the way to Xanarkin, and you learn, like, the final summoning is, like, fake, and you just go back and play some Blitzball before you fight Unaleska, no big deal. Yeah, that's, like, exactly what I fucking did. I think on that save sphere, the one right after Unaleska, I was like, I need a break. I did a relaxing blitzball session. I played blitzball for like two hours. Yeah, the uh, part where like you fight Sin, like you knock him out, so he's just laying in the middle of the city, and then he just plays some blitzball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't you don't want to keep fighting Sin right now. Yeah, because you like you do like the uh, like when you awaken him with like the the bell or what, like the song the 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 um, that fucking uh, summoning song. The hymn of the faith. Yeah, the hymn of the faith. And then, like, you can just go play Blitzball. Like, he's still, like, he's, like, activated. And you're just like, nah, dude, I'm going to play some Blitzball. Just, you Hold just on. relax. You just relax a little bit. A couple hundred games of Blitzball I want to play real quick. The yeah. thing I thought really cool about Blitzball is, like, the fact that almost, like, half of the people in the world you can run up to and press, like, square and like, try to recruit, recruit them on your team. Yeah. Yep. Fuck yeah, dude. In and especially... The uh, more games that you play, the more the other teams like start to get scrambled because they kick their own members off and recruit random people on. So there are a couple of times when they recruited somebody and I was like, that guy looks really good. I want him on my team. So I'd play them a bunch, like make him get kicked off their team so I can run over and recruit him onto my team. Hell yeah. And then I think like one of the best players in the game is like from one of the other teams. Like, um... Yeah, the goalie. Goalie. Yeah. What's his name? He's like double uh, Nimrook. He has like yeah, Nimrook. Fucking Nimrook, bro. Yeah, he's like one of the best best players in the game. I, I looked up the stats. He's the number one goalie from level 1 to 99. Holy shit. He's dude. that good. Who's he from? The Goers? The, the All Bed Sykes. Oh, yeah, the Sykes. The Sykes, dude. <clears throat> oh, man. Who's your favorite Blitzball team? Uh, so. I like every single member on the the team, the Killer Could Beast. They're like the lime green. Yeah, they're people. the one. They're the, the Kimaris, right? Yeah. So the like the top right, I I do Larvae. He's like some tan dude with like the with the uh, headband. 
Yeah. He has like the highest shoot in the game. And he has like really high attack, which is good on a uh, front line guy. Because like there were a couple times when somebody would tackle him and they would get the ball, and then he would still be in the range, and then he would just tackle them back as like a, a shooter and like get the ball and then just shoot and make the goal. Holy shit! And there's another guy on the same team. He has really high endurance and like really high shoot. Ooh, the yeah. third guy. The third guy is the midfielder. He's a V Roja. He's also part of the Killer Kabeez. He's like some black dude with an eye patch. And he looks yeah, really cool. Yeah, that dude's fucking awesome. Yeah, I, always, yeah. I remember that guy. Yeah, fuck he, yeah. He's my favorite player in like Blitz Walks just because he looks so cool. He he also has like a he's like in his forties and he has like a white beard and like white yeah. hair. So he looks like a yeah, like looks a like an old an old pirate. fucking uh, dad Blitzball player. And he's just like the fucking yeah. king. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. I remember that guy. <laughs> And then uh, one of my defenders is Rop. I think I told you to get him on your team. He's like a all bad guy. He yeah. has like a blue tank top. And then some other uh, defender on the Kilgabi is Kalukin, who also has really high passing and attack. What about Keepa? Then, Didn't yeah, Keepa doesn't Keepa have one of the best shoots in the game though? So le- from levels ninety to ninety nine, his shoot goes from like ten to ninety nine. So he's like technically the best shooter, but he has really slow speed. But I never got past level 60 in Blissfall, so I never got to that point. Jesus. Yeah, you can... Uh, I would love... I, I was online fucking, I don't know, like a year ago, a year or two ago. And we were talking... It was on like a thread on V, and we were talking about, uh, like, I think Final Fantasy or whatever. And I was like, dude, when is, like, a standalone Blitzball Manager game coming out? Like, when is Blitzball Manager 2019 coming out you know and people are like dude i would buy the fuck out of that <laughs> like i was like dude like wouldn't that be incredible to just like manage a team and then get to play the games and then get to like mess with the league and like move around and there's like a bunch <coughs> of different fucking players and you can like recruit and shit <laughs> dude i would play the absolute fuck out of that game yeah i'd buy it too <laughs> yeah well, dude like, hey man let's make a fucking fan project fucking uh <laughs> blitzball manager Spira, I don't know what's the year in Spira. Fucking AD six or some <laughs> shit. I don't know, but uh, but yeah, I, I was thinking about that. And, like if they added online play, it would be the oh absolute worst thing ever because of how the game's set up. Yeah, because like because the entire uh, once like the enemy has a ball, like your people are all AI, so you're just hoping to God that they like get in their range so they can start chasing. It. But what there are like was- certain. Inst- what if it was every single person on the team though was controlled where like yeah, it's no, like a, it's, a, be fine. it's like a 10 what is it it's six six people per team right three including two and... the goalie so it's five five including the goalie yeah it's six members with the goalie so there's really only five people on the right but somebody has team. to play the goalie right so like the goalie yeah. would be like uh he has to sit there each and... person gets a i would say fucking if it's 6v6 fucking Blitzball, I would play the absolute fuck out of that. Dude, build up a crew and just, like, make a name, make a logo, fucking uh, jump into fucking games and just wreck scrubs. And, like, I mean, like, it would be, like, how would you balance the, would it just be skill-based instead of math-based? That's what I, I wouldn't know. I would like for them to keep the math system, but... I love the math system. So that know. means that you'd be able to raise your stats by playing in games, but that would give an advantage <laughs> to people who play more. It would have to yeah, be... It would, it would of... be a, a nightmare to balance because they have, like, nap pass and nap shot, so I can just nap pass through the entire field, put them all to sleep, and all, like, their entire team's asleep, so basically just sit there and do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to put some thought into that because uh, that is making uh, my downstairs feel tingly. I'm going to have to think about that a little bit. It's getting those neurons firing upstairs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. Oh, God, I'd play the fuck out of that. That would be incredible. It'd be like fucking, what, like Team Deathmatch and Call of Duty, dude. Like, it'd be great, but it's Blitzball, you know? It'd be more like... um. Fuck, what was that blimp game that, like, Quentin and I used to play? Uh, and Derek, me, Derek, Q, it was, like, that blimp flying team game. Maybe you played it once because Fern ruined it for you. Fern did ruin uh, that game for us. 
Like, God damn, what was that fucking game called? Oh, well. Like, one of those teams... I know, I know the game. It'd be like Rainbow Six Siege is probably the best example where, like, each character plays a role, each, char- each player needs to know their role, and you guys have to work in a tight team setting. It would be... Dude, that would be an MLG game, bro. MLG <laughs> Blitzball. Fuck I'll yes. I would fucking play that shit. That would be the one... Like, MLG stream bait game that I play. Hands down. That would be the one. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Fucking Blitzball. 2019, dude. I'd, oh, oh boy, God. would I fucking play that game. Oh, my God. All right. Fucking, I think we've covered just about everything. Is there anything else we need to talk about? <laughs> Final Fantasy X? It's been, a, uh... it's been just about an hour and a half, which is what I was thinking. So, I mean, honestly, I've got everything I've written down. We've covered I think we're good. I'm sure there's more stuff I could think of, but I think cool. it's good. All right. Fucking, we'll close it out. I'm going to listen to this whole fucking podcast right now, and I'll meet you in the other call. Yeah. Fucking, uh, thanks. Thank you oh, for... Oh, wait, wait. Oh. Oh. So, <laughs> Here there's we go. A, so, like, we, we didn't really talk about Orin that much, and I just want to... Ooh! Like, you know what? We didn't talk about Orin. Like, let's, let's break like, into some fucking Orin. Three minutes, I just want to talk about something, so... Like, four... Like, Oren doesn't really have any character development throughout, like, the entire game until you get to the end. Where he dies? But, where, where you find out that he's dead? Yeah, no, I just, like, on my second playthrough, I thought it was just really cool to finally see this stuff. But, like, near the beginning of the game, like, uh, I think Waka refers to Oren as, like, a legendary guardian. And Oren is, like, the type of person Audrey never really acknowledges, like, this uh, title that's given to him because he you assume like he always or he's just badass so he's not gonna say anything about it right but it's because he lost his fucking best friends yeah like yeah. you find out that it's like it's actually because he's like super fucking sad that both of his friends are fucking nixed gonzos yeah and where, where is that yeah so like it's it's really like a two minute scene at the end but they're there's a scene where or you can uh, see the past where, like, Orin, uh, Jet, and Rask are going towards Unaleska, and then, like, Orin is kind of, like, the Titus of the, he the party where he's, Yeah, like, he's the goofy, he's be- he's the begging. young guy. Yeah, and he's begging them, like, there has to be some other way. Like, we can't just sacrifice ourselves and throw ourselves away for this thing where sin's guaranteed to come back. And Braska and Jet basically say, like, oh, no, well, there's always a chance that it won't happen this time. So we have to take this chance, and Oren's, he can't do anything to stop them. So it's like, Oren feels like he let Jet and Braska down because... He let them Sin die. He let them kill themselves, yeah. and it was a waste of their lives. Yeah, so Waka says something like, uh... Hey, um, yeah, man, you're a legendary hero, man, yeah. Fucking something that, like that's, that. That's essentially what he says. <laughs> yeah. Hey, legendary, like legendary guardians choke too, yeah, and then Oren is... Uh, legendary guardian no i was just a boy i wanted to change the system ultimately i changed nothing that was my story Jeez. yeah i actually <laughs> that, i actually totally remember that cutscene on the second playthrough it's really cool because he's always telling titus like this is your story it's worth it he's basically telling titus like you can Don't definitely change up. something like you have the opportunity like i literally your dad told me to bring you so that you could be the final change if something goes wrong and he's, yeah, he's telling him throughout the whole game, like, dude, you literally can be the guy who saves the day if you step out of line enough and do and be you. And I, I, I did like that. I liked Arin. He was the quiet, stoic, sort of fatherly figure that you have in the game because, you know, your dad, like, you, he's like the dad. In the beginning of the game, he's sort of the dad that you wanted for Titus, where he, like, you know, Arin's always telling him, like, oh, you, you're doing a good job, kid, fucking... You know, you can do this. Yeah. You know, I'm here for you. Like, and you're, you're just don't, like, man. Don't mess like, this up. Yeah, you know, and you're just like, oh, this is the dad that Titus needed. You know, and then it kind of is in that, you know, in that moment. And then it, it shapes Titus into being the hero that does eventually save the day. What a big thing. <laughs> yeah. And, and after that scene when they go up to Unaleska and uh, you see, like, Unaleska was the one to kill Orin because Orin was enraged that Jen Braska died, so he basically went back to fight Unaleska, who just one-shotted him and killed him right there. Yeah, and and it was like this. Uh, 
moment where Oren was basically waiting for the entire party to get to this scene where they can realize that this entire system of throwing away the summoner and having somebody else become the final Aeon is false because Sin is guaranteed to always come back because that's what Unalusk had said. Mm. So Oren could have basically told them that at any time in the entire game, but he chose not to because he wanted them to figure it out for themselves. Organically. Organically. He wanted them to come to the realization that it's all a waste of your time by themselves. Yeah. Because you just tell them, like, dude, everybody's going to die. Like, this is... They're like, ah, whatever. Then they can rationalize and be like, oh, well, we still need to do it. And yeah. And blah, blah, blah. But if they, you know, because of the love story between Titus and Yuna and how he brought out those those childlike free parts of her and then they all became unified and like Walker was the main uh i would say enemy in terms of doing something different he was one of the the main people who were like we cannot go against the teachings we have to do exactly what the teachings say we have to and, yeah, and that's the other thing is that's walk beginning of the game but like is. once you get halfway through the you see him start like trying to come uh, Riku after they blew up home left the Happy Fireworks Show, yeah. Festival, Happy Festival Fireworks Show. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like funny scene, but it shows he's growing as a character because now oh he's caring about the his, Al- his, his, Al- his sworn Al-Bed. fucking enemies. So he's I, heathen Albed. The heathen Albed. I was a huge fan of it. I did feel like the characters actually grew and changed. I was a big fan of that because I think in a lot of games, characters are just the characters they are from beginning to end. Things happen to them and they react, but there's no like visible physical change in their mentality for what happens with them. But you can really see in Final Fantasy X, Waka does start like he goes, oh shit, like the, the all bad are just trying to save the summoners. They're not trying to kill the summoners. They're trying to save the summoners. Like, how fucking weird is that? Like, I didn't expect that. And he starts to change, and then he does cheer up Riku. And they even say in the beginning, like, hey, uh, don't tell Waka that uh, Yuna is half Albed. Like, that was a, And Riku is Albed. And that was a big thing. You're like, oh, shit, right, because Waka fucking hates him. Like, what is he going to think if, like, the person he's protecting is an Albed, you know, because the Albed fucking killed his brother or whatever. You know, it's all it's, it's all the all bed's fault that his brother died when he went and go got, went <coughs> went and fought sin. And um but like yeah, like you said, like near the end Waka changes. Near the end Auron shows his true colors. Near the end, Yuna has changed from this person who is diehard to go do this mission to someone who agrees with Titus that we, we shouldn't throw our lives away with something that has never worked in the past. Um I don't really remember any major changes from Riku. Or Kimari, but I can definitely say Lulu doesn't change either. Yeah, Lulu, but those those characters do. I mean, they're you know, it's not perfect. It's not a perfect game. Not all the characters have like really deep moments, but fucking definitely Tida, Titus, Yuna, uh, Waka, and Orin have like really big character changes or reveals or, or whatever in the game. I was like, well, I think one of the, I think one of the big things uh, with Lulu was the fact that you know she was in love with Waka's brother. And their relationship where uh, Waka and Lulu sort of kind of fall in love with each other instead, or in in his brother's stead. I thought that was cool. I like that. Okay. You know, that's kind of a change with, with Lulu where she doesn't really like Waka. And she's, she's kind of a cold, cold-ass bitch for, like, most of the game. But then, like, you, you know, she's like, oh, well, I just, like, really loved Waka's brother, you know? And then he got taken away from us. And then, like, she starts to sort of replace... What is his name, by the way? I don't fucking remember. Chapu. Chapu. Fucking Chapu. Yeah. She replaces Chapu. 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 She replaces Chapu with Waka. And I thought that was a a pretty good moment. Uh, See, uh, well, Waka said, like, Titus kind of replaced Chapu. So that's also why I thought uh, maybe Titus and Lulu would have gone together. But... Nope. 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 It was Waka and uh, Waka and Lulu. <laughs> that fucking cutscene, uh, like that two minute movie in between uh, Final Fantasy X and Final Fantasy X 2, where like Lulu's pregnant with Waka's baby, or Waka gets fat from being a dad, and he's got like the oh, yeah. same character model from Final Fantasy X, where they just keep calling him a fat piece of shit. They're like, Lose some weight, fatty. You've gained some fucking weight. 
And it's just like, dude, back off, bro. I'm looking at that character model. It doesn't look like it's changed one yeah, bit. At the end of uh, X2, you get to see the baby in the cutscene. Do you really? Yeah, they I thought, you, I thought you never finished X2. I, I saw the ending cutscene. Oh, okay. Yeah, because your mom walked in while you were massaging that girl. And you are just like, well, oh, yeah. turn this trash off. <laughs> gotta fucking, gotta get rid of this fucking sin fucking shit out of this god's house. Yeah, fuck yeah, dude. I love it. I think I think the game. That's why it's it is my favorite uh, JRPG of all time. Um, it's just got so much going on. I still fucking have trouble with the story, like with the actual like in depth, like what the fuck is Titus type thing. I think that the the fact that the the mini game can bring me back is a huge selling point for it. If you're into that sort of thing, it's literally just math water polo. But like I don't know, it just fucking clicked with me. Um, the story's Pretty great, cool. the combat's great, the, uh, the aesthetic, I love the aesthetic of Final Fantasy X, it's very, like, um, ocean-y, and, like, bright ocean villages, and, like, bright and grassy, and I was a huge fan of that, like, because I like games like that, like, um, the first island in Kingdom Hearts is very much like that, um, I think that, like, Super Mario Sunshine is like that, where it's, like, really, like, a bright and colorful, happy game, yeah. you know? I like games like that. It makes me feel like a kid again, you know, like those happy times. Like, there's not really like a dark moment in uh, in Final Fantasy. I mean, there's, the game's dark, like dark themes. The overall story is dark, but the atmosphere is really. The dark. atmosphere is very bright and colorful, and I was a big, big fan of that. So I think the atmosphere is great. I think I a lot of people were like, "Oh, this game's like super straightforward, like it's on rails." I have no problem with that. I don't mind if a game takes me from beginning to end and you kind of just, like, dick off a little bit to the side occasionally. Like, it doesn't need to be this super wide-open, go-wherever-you-want game. Final Fantasy X and, and, to the same extent, Final Fantasy XIII were very much just, like, go straight, get the game done. Like, just follow my story. I made a story for you. Go do it. Like, I don't, I don't have any problem with that. I've always been an advocate of a game having one ending. One really good ending. There's nothing wrong with that. You don't need 60 different endings. You need one powerful ending that hooks you forever. The ending with Yuna and Titus and their whole story, all of it. The, the destruction of sin. It's a beautiful, great, all-enclosed story. And I'm a big fan of it. There's no, like, alternate ending where fucking Yuna becomes a robot and, like... Uh, Sin was actually fucking someone else or whatever. He comes back or whatever. Like, Deus Ex Machina plot twist at the end. Yeah. Fuck all that noise. Or, uh, or, or like Deus Ex where you hit one of three fucking buttons and you just pick your ending. So. Or you pick your color of an ending. Oh, oh boy. Throwing shade. <laughs> Had to find a moment to throw shade at any uh -huh. three. Hell yeah. Hell yes. So yeah, pick your the. I would pick the poop synthesis uh, ending. That would be my. Just take a dump, take a dump in the giant ass. <laughs> yeah, have you seen that comic? But it's so no, good. I oh yeah. So yeah, Final Fantasy X. If you ever want to play it, I fucking recommend it. You, you as a listener, talking to the future people now. Uh, you now have a little bit of information about Final Fantasy X. Uh, it was loose. It was wild. Uh, but you should be able to mention something about this game to somebody at some point, and you should be able to hold a conversation with a little bit of the stuff we gave you. But I recommend it. I definitely recommend it for somebody. I would say this is a pretty good first Final Fantasy game uh, because it's straight. It's a good intro one. Yeah, because it's straightforward. The combat is fairly simplistic. It's not super challenging. So you can play this game and then decide, do I want it to be closed off like a, like a hallway? Go for Final Fantasy 13. Do I want it to be more open-ended? Go for Final Fantasy like 7, you know, or uh, 9 or 8. 12. 12 is a fucking trip. But And then you also get to decide, like, do I want the, the straight-up hardcore um, – turn-based combat where it's every person takes a turn or i want atb if you want atb you can play eight nine uh 12 12 12 12 has some of the best combat. 12. yeah 12 is so fucking automatic that it just plays the goddamn game itself 
Love it. I'm a big fan of the Gambit system. Uh, whenever I beat Final Fantasy XII for the first time, we can do a podcast on that. Um, love Final Fantasy XII's combat. I, I, I'm like on both ends of the spectrum. I love like that super turn base, but also Final Fantasy XII's combat was so engaging to me because you can create your Gambit deck and you can just like, oh, this 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 deck isn't working. I'm a, let me go back to the drawing board and and make a new Gambit set. For this fight or whatever, I was a big fan of that. That's a different day, though. Yeah, for sure. Well, yeah. So, uh, you know, Final Fantasy X, I think, is a great intro for anybody who wants to get into Final Fantasy. Uh, I think it's an extremely fun game. The story is worth listening to and paying attention to. It's a pretty. Sh- it's not that long either. It's like 30, 30 hours. You could bang it out pretty quick. Be twenty. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not super long. So, you know, you won't kill, like, you know, I put 100 hours, you know, in, like, a month in Monster Hunter World. It, it won't take you that long. It, you can finish it pretty pretty quickly. So, I'm a big fan of that. It's it's an all-around good game, and I recommend it to anybody who listens to this. So, thanks. Uh, we're going to end it here. It's been about exactly as long as I thought it was going to be, about an hour and a half. We dicked off for a little while, but that's what I wanted. Um Thanks for listening, Mike. Plug mm-hmm. yourself. Plug yourself, homie. <laughs> what do you What do you got going on, bro? Hot ones. Uh, I don't want to be found online, so please don't look for me. Oh, so uh, at the end of this, after uh, we disconnect, I'm gonna put up Mike's social security number and oh, his, 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 mother, his mother's maiden name, and you know you can just become him. <laughs> you, can, you don't even have to find him. You can just oh, you can just become him. him. Yeah. Just so that's it, man. That's Final Fantasy X. Um, hopefully soon we can do another episode. Mike not might not be a part of it. Mike might be. Who knows? Uh, but this was the very first episode of this terrible podcast. Thanks for listening, and Mike, thanks for being a part of it. I appreciate you. You're welcome. All right. Good night, everybody.